and nothing is free. Okay, now let's look at, now I don't know how much I talked about My Labs Plus the other day, but I'm going to talk about it today. My Labs Plus, here it is. Now when you go to My Labs Plus, how many has used My Labs Plus before? Okay, one person. Okay. So, we're talking to the whole class, so that way everybody should be quiet. So you get out your notebooks or get out your handouts. I'm going to send out those new handouts today. I fell asleep last night and I didn't feel it. So I'm going to do it today. So I got two hours before my next, before I trick class, so I should be able to do it. Unless that woman beats down the door and comes in here, I have to go to my office and do it. Um, if you got your handouts, just kind of use your handouts to write on. If you don't have your handouts, then uh, just use your notebook. But the handouts that I'd probably tell you to use is the handout that says My Lab Plus. It's the one that's got the pretty graphics on it that you know I didn't do. You know, it looks like a factory handout. Now, this is where a lot of people and a lot of people say, oh, I don't need to write anything down. You're going to be one of those people that third week class you still haven't registered because you're going through a cluster with My Labs Plus trying to get unclustered because you didn't follow SA direction because you didn't write it down. Okay, guys. Sorry, girls, but it's mostly guys that do that because they don't need what? They don't need directions. Yeah. That's why they run around with smokestacks on a pickup truck. <laughs> Indicator. Girls, we'll have to talk about that later. I'll tell you what that means. All right. So you type in your TC. First of all, no, let's go back. Hubert said go to My Labs Plus. Okay. Number one error students make. They, they don't listen, and they go to WW38. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Might be getting on the black web or something. There we go. What? I suck. No, no, I don't suck. It's the Russians. It's the Russians, because I don't make mistakes. Yep, that's it. And, and... People get near me and breathe on me, and I, and, and I creep out. That's what that's what happens. Oh, God of mine. I hate life. Okay, my my. I'm gonna get somebody up here to type for me. There we go. And this is what they pull up. This is it. And this is the number one error that students make. They don't listen. They don't write down the website that you're supposed to go to. This is not the website you're supposed to go to because it is not Tri-County Tech's website. It is My Labs Plus website. This is the factory website. This is where you go if you have problems and stuff, okay? And if somehow they try to log on here and it asks, and, and, and the way that I know this is because we haven't used course IDs since 2011 because I was using it, okay? This is going to ask for a course ID. If you write me an email that says, Hubert, I need a course ID, are you going to get a response from me? Right. Nope. Because you just put a sign around your neck that says, I can't follow simple A directions. Okay? Remember that when you write that email. Because somebody will try to ask me for a course ID before the week is out, or before next week is out. Don't do that. You go and write this down, tctc.mylabsplus.com. The way that you know you're on the right spot is it says Tri-County Tech at the top. Now, for those students that have had My Labs Plus before, use your username and your password that you used last. Now, if you've been out for more than a year, chances are you might want to try your T number again because you've been inactive, okay? Try both. But for those new users, which is 99% of the class, you type in your TCTC email first part, not the at tctc.edu, but the first part, mine is 
H. McClure. That's what you type in. So if yours is B. Smith 13, you type in B. Smith 13. If yours is C. White, then C. White. And then you type in your T number, capital T. Oops, sorry. Capital T, and then your number. And then go into that's what it, that's what it should look like. You should have your it'll be 120 right there. This is 120. Right? There it is. Now, if you botch that up, then you need to call me, or you need to call the. There's a support key up here, but you can't get in there. But there's another thing, the access code. When you type in your H McClure and your T number. When you type that in, the second screen is probably going to have three options. The three options are going to be type in access code, get access code, or buy access code online, and then 14 day trial period. Now, you can use the 14 day trial period, but that is a double edged sword. If you use the 14 day trial period and you go past the 14 days, then it will put you in an inactive status, and that's another cluster we have to uncluster. All right? So if you use the 14 day trial period, that's fine. Just don't go over the 14 days, and it will let you know. If you get to the 13th day, then you need to get your ATM card or whatever, and you need to go in and buy an access code before that 14th day expires, or we're going to have to take another two or three days to try to uncluster. Okay? Because they, they at my lab plus put you in an inactive status. Okay, you go get your court, I mean your uh, access code on the 15th day, and you try to punch it in. It's not going to take it. It's going to say this student does not exist. See, then I have to call or I have to go in and I have to go in or they have to go in and change your status from inactive to active. And then you can put your access code in. That sounds simple, but if I have to call my lab plus, y'all know how simple that can be. It would take 30 minutes to do five second job. Okay. So try to do it before the 14th day. Now, if you have your access code in your book with your book, a little cardboard thing, then you just hit access code and type it in and you're good to go. If you need to buy an access code, buy it online. What about the book? Well, if you got a self thing wrapped book right now with the cardboard thing in it, you could take it back with the receipt, get your money back, and you could buy the access code online and save about 50 bucks, 40 or 50 bucks. Okay? That's up to you. You can bring a book, you can bring an old book, you can bring out printed out sections of the book, you can share a book, you can use an old book. I don't care what you do, what you bring to class. And I'll show you how to print out the book today. And that way you can print out sections to bring with you to class. Okay? Any questions on logging in? Okay. Click on the section. When you click on to the section, it's going to give you this. It's called the dashboard. Okay? Calendar, it'll have the assignments on it when I assign assignments. I will do that when I start teaching, which will probably be next week, next Tuesday. Okay, I'll probably start. You do have an assignment. I think I already told you this. That is to read the first two chapters according to your outline. If your outline says 1.1 through 1.4, you read 1.1 through 1.4. If your outline says skip 2.2, then you skip 2.2. Whatever the outline says, that's what you do unless I take it out, and I'll tell you if I'm going to take it out. And there are some sections I do take out. They're just not in chapter one or two or three, because that's the first, that's the footing, okay? All right, so look at this side right here, and tell me if you see three links that might be important. Quizzes and tests. Now, I'm not being... A jerk. But why do you, what do you think is in quizzes and tests? 
why do I make such a big deal out of this? Because I will get an email from someone this semester saying, I can't find, I'm on Blackboard and I can't find your quizzes and tests, or I can't find your tests. Will they get a response? No, because I have told everybody that I don't use what? Good gosh. Okay, then I will get an email saying, I can't find what? Homework. Y'all think I'm kidding. I'm not. All right? I am not kidding. I can show you the emails. And that's why I have to go over this stuff. Because if I go over this stuff and I still get one email, then what if I don't go over? I'll get five or ten emails. Okay? So that's the two. What about the third? That's the two. Where's the third one that you think would be important? Grade book. Why do you say grade book? That's where your grades are. Now, let's talk about this. Now, I have to talk about this because I have made five new bonus questions to go on your test because of the DA questions I get last semester. Okay? One question. Hubert, is the grade in grade book going to be my grade for the semester? No, I'm going to take that grade, I'm going to multiply it by 4, divide by 6, then I'm going to add 2 and multiply by 6. So I can make extra work for myself. No, I'm going to assign some more problems after your final exam, and that way I can up your grade a little bit. And I have to grade it myself, so that's extra work for me. People... Okay, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. I do not make extra work for myself. Not because I'm lazy, I just think it's stupid. All right? I'm, I'm born and raised on a farm. Okay? You don't reinvent the what? You don't reinvent the wheel. I'm not going to make extra work for myself just because I want to look busy. All right? All of the work that I give you will be on my labs plus if all the work i give you is on my labs plus and my labs plus grades all of the work then the final grade that you get on my labs plus is going to be your final grade now what happens is this is what happens student goes okay i'm gonna go to grade book right before the final or not before the final it's the week before the final and all the all the homework is fixing to uh, terminate, okay? I got a great book. Let's see. What's my test average? Test average is 96. All right, I got an A in the class. Hot dog. I'm just cap off the final. I got a 96. I can make a C on the final and I'll be all right. I figure it out, okay? But what you haven't figured out is your homework rate, all right? Let's say you went through and you haphazardly did the homework because you took Math 120 in high school or you invented Math 120, one of the two, all right? And you've got what in for those incomplete? What is going to go in for those incomplete grades? Zeros. Will that increase or decrease your grade? It will decrease it. But you didn't look at it because you know everything. you got to hit this one, overall score. When you hit the overall score, instead of that 97, it's going to show a 92 because you didn't do some emails. Some of you may have a 92, and it drops it down to an 84 or 86. And that's where I get a lot of emails. What happened to my grade? I don't know. And there's a little thing here that says, well, I don't have it. There. What does this say? Show calculation. And it'll show. Now, the the uh, the percentages are not right right now because I haven't went in and changed it. But I'll change it to 60, 20, and 20. 60 for unit test, 20 for final exam, 20 for homework. And it'll go in and it'll show you what your homework grade is, what your test unit test grade is, and what your final exam is. And it'll show you how it gets there. I don't do quizzes. Oh, good question. I have to give y'all a in-class, I have to give you two in-class tests. They have to be brutal. Remember I told you about 
the 17% retention teacher is telling the 87% retention teacher that he needs to give tests in class. So I'm going to give you a test. There are going to be five math questions. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be awful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be terrible. And uh, if anybody asks you if I gave you an in-class test, say, yeah, I almost failed it. Just make sure you make it. Call me a bastard, okay? Just make sure I'm the meanest teacher in the world, okay? That way it'll tell those people, oh, he's giving me class test. His attention will go down. Good. Whatever. All right? I will count that as quizzes, and I will put that in there, and it'll be, it'll be 5% of 105%. So that means that if you've got a zero quiz average, then what's it going to add to your 100 points? Zero. If you've got, it's just 5% of the grade basically, but of 105%. So if you make a, if you have a 100 average, then that's going to give you five points on your final what? Great. See what I'm saying? So the, the in-class test, remember in-class test, they're, they, they're, they'll do nothing for what? Help. Okay? But you don't say that next semester when you're in another math class and the teacher asks you, did you ever give your own in-class test? Yeah, it was terrible. It was brutal. Please, I appreciate that. Because if you say that, then I'll keep doing it. And we'll keep rolling along and everything will be happy. And otherwise, I'll have to actually start giving the test in class and then people will fail and all that. I don't want that to happen. I have to do extra work and all that. Okay, so quizzes, you'll see that, but it'll only be 5% of 105%. Okay, now make sure you know how to navigate through your grade book. Here it is. If you want to see test, test, homework, homework, and quizzes. Quizzes really don't matter because I don't give them. All assignments, you click that. Show overall score, show calculation. Please learn how to use this before the last week of the semester, please. Okay? And you've got several bonus questions on the test that come from what I just went over. Good. So the three most important is quizzes and tests, grade book, and homework. Well, let's say you want to print out your test or print out your, uh, oh, grade book is where you print out and review your test and homework. When you have a test or you have a test or homework over here, it'll have a hyperlink that says review. And you can hit review. Once you're in review, you can print. Everybody got that? Review and print. You do that through grade book. All right, so let's say you want to print out your book. Well, the fourth button that's most important is chapter contents right here. Click on chapter contents. Somebody tell me what sections of chapter one are we supposed to read? I saw you had an outline there. Okay, so all of, let's see, okay, most, all, mostly all of chapter five. So I want to print out all of these sections. So I hit 1.1, I go to e-text, and then I hit print. Well, check for updates. There we go. And there's a print button in the top right-hand corner, and you can print up to 10 pages, and all of the lessons, all of the sections are less than 10 pages. They're not exactly 10 pages. Some of them are up to 10 pages. Some of them are less than 10 pages. Print them back. I don't know if you can print them back in front, but that's up to the computer and the printer that you're using. But do that, punch holes in them, put them in your notebook, bring them to class. That way, if I go over something, you can highlight. Now, that's for the people who don't have a book. <coughs> or decide not to buy a book. That's how you do it, okay? So that's how you print out your book, through chapter contents. Now, how do you get to 1.2? Well, you can go over here, 
and do the handy dandy right there. There we go. And click on to there and print that out. Simple as that. Chapter two. Once you're in here, you can do all of it. But you got to have your what? You got to have your outline because your outline tells you what sections to read. Okay, so there's that. Questions on printing out your book. Is there any questions on the book thing? Old book, new book, shared book, still book, whatever. Print out your book, whichever one you want to do. All right, let's go to the main thing, and that is the homework. The reason it's the main thing is that's what I talk about most on this. Homework. And I'm going to go to chapter 3 because it's math. And I'm going to pull up a question. This is what all the homework questions look like. Now, y'all can read. I'm not going to read the question. That's not what I'm going to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is this right here. Okay? And that's not what I want. Not in the, not in the math questions yet. Hold on. There we go. Okay. When you're given a math question, not a vocabulary question, those previous problems were like terminology and vocabulary. But when you have a math question, you're going to have these learning style objectives over here that may help you get over the hump when you're doing homework. Now, again, this is a Math 120 class. It's not rocket science, okay? So you're not going to, unless you're new to probability, you're not going to use this very much, okay? But sometimes you may come up with, to a problem in homework that you don't know how to do. So there's these two first ones are tutorials. This is the guided tutorial. Help me solve this. The guided tutorial is the tutor that's in the tutoring lab that if you have x plus 3 is equal to 6. And the tutor goes, well, what side is the x on? And you say, it's on the left. What side, what do you want to get by itself? You want to get the x by itself. I'm asking questions as I tutor. Okay? That's called a guided tutorial. All right? It's a learning style. Some people like it. Who likes it? The people that don't know the material, the people that have not seen the material before, those are the people that like the two that help me solve this. All right? Now, I guarantee you, if I was to ask somebody, in, uh, everybody in here, who has not taken probability and statistics, there would be very few that has it because it's one of the underwater fire, I'm sorry, it's one of the classes that they push in high school so you can make an A, so everybody makes an A and makes money for the, for the school. Okay? Well, they veer off from the calculus. All right? Everybody knows that. Okay? Why don't they send everybody to calculus? Because they fail. Okay? No, that's not stupid. Don't be redneck on me. Okay? <laughs> that's stupid stuff I ever seen. Where's your cell phone? Where's your cell phone? No, no, no. No. Pick it up. Show it up. What was that three or four years ago? It was a tack phone. What was it before a tack phone? It was a brick phone. That's where your calculus comes in. All right? I'm, 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 I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying you've got to realize if you don't have calculus and you don't have physics, we'd still be in log cabin. Think about it. The last jump, the last 10 years of technology, how many of you remember a Walton? Very few. Why? Because we jumped from a Walkman to a watch that I've got at home that I don't wear. Dang old watch, dang old does stuff on your phone. Okay? My kids got them for me and I don't wear it. I, get, I wear them when they're around. I don't wear it because I don't like it. Anyway, it does everything that the phone does. Now, what causes that? That's taking a problem and reducing it. Reducing, reducing. It's taking a big brick phone and reducing, reducing, reducing. You can't do that by jerking the stuff out of the brick phone and shoving it into. A, you can't do that. That's where your math and science comes in. 
Now, I understand why you said stupid, because in high school, you think everything is stupid, all right? Honestly, you do. But when you, when you, when you think about calculus, think about the cell phone. Think about your TV. How many of you remember the TV that looked like a, a big cabinet, big wood cabinet? Y'all remember them? Now, they're about that thin. Did they just jerk the stuff out of the cabinet, just shove it into that plastic container? No. They had to reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce. And that's how we get stuff like that. So, but anyway, what the reason they don't put people in calculus is because it's a weeder course. What's a weeder course? It separates the men from the boys or the puppies from the dogs. I don't want to offend anybody. The puppies from the dogs. Can I say puppies and dogs? Is that okay? It separates the people that are going to work. Thank you. Against the ones that don't. Oh, uh, well, I just don't. Uh, I didn't know how to do fractions when I started to try to it. So don't give me that bull crap. All right? I didn't know how to add one half plus one eighth. Okay? So don't give me the bull crap of, oh, I just can't do calculus. It just takes a lot of work. Okay? All right, now. Sorry, I, I, I jumped on a little rabbit there. I'm sorry, or I jumped on a little. But the whole point is, these two things right here are very important, depending on whether you know the material or whether you don't. What if you know the material somewhat, but you don't, you, one of these people, I can't stand that. I can't, don't ask me a question. Just show me how to do it. Guys, y'all are like that, right? Help me solve it. This is it. Show me how to do it. Question help. Shows you how to do it. Boom. Doesn't ask you any questions. Just shows you how to do it. Okay? So that's the difference between help me solve this and view an example. Now, some of you are readers. Y'all can read like War and Peace in like two days. And y'all like read five books a day. And I wish I could read like that. Anybody in here a reader? Oh my gosh. I wish I could do that. I read a comic book and fall asleep. <laughs> Anybody like that? Read a book, you can't read a page, and you fall asleep? I do it. I sit there, and I, I'm going to read this book. And I sit there at my desk, and I actually, while I'm sitting up, I will read that page, and I might make it to the next page, maybe. But I'll actually fall asleep sitting up. Now, somebody tell me what that means. I don't know what that means. But I don't care how interesting the book is, the heck it can be a comic. I mean, I, I can't do it. I'm, that's why I went into math. But anyway, some of y'all say, well, I really don't like this, so I'm going to go to the book and I'm going to read it. And it takes you right to the book, so you don't have to print it out. You just go right to the book. Now, this is good for a person that likes this type of learning style, likes to read. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. Stack Crunch is a glorified spreadsheet. I do, use, I do use Excel in here a lot. So if you like Excel, that's good. I do not, write this down, I do not use Excel to force you to use Excel. Okay, the only reason I use Excel, the only reason I use Excel is because I have one board up here and I write very big. You don't want me to write. And that way I do all the calculations on the spreadsheet because I can make the spreadsheet and the calculations fit on this board. That's the only reason. I saw that. That's the only reason. That was a yawn, wasn't it? The only reason I use Excel. Only reason. So you can play with StatCrunch if you want to. If you're a computer geek, then like I am, then go ahead. Print. This is important. Print is for the people that like to do two things. One is keep good notes, and two is to do the conventional paper and pencil. If you like, if you don't like to look at a problem on the, and do it on, you don't have to do that, then just print off the whole assignment right here, and it'll print all of these problems, uh, one through 30 or whatever's on the homework. 
for that section, 1.3.1. You have to do it for each section. All right? Now, once you print it out, don't go back in and play with the problems because it'll change the problems. Okay, you realize that? Each one problem, like if I redo this problem right here, and I type in a three, and I get it wrong, watch what happens when I go back to that problem. It changes the problem, or you get a similar question where they took that feature off. It usually does it. It changes the problem. It might change the problem. I don't know. But it's better safe than sorry. If you Let's say you go to number one and you say, okay, I want to, this problem's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 problems. I want to print them out. Go to number one and you go here and you hit print, print homework assignment and print. And that'll print all the 3.1 homework. You put that, put three holes in it, put it in your notebook. You do that for every single section in one, two, and three. You put it in your notebook. Now, the reason you do that, hold on just a second. The reason you do that is for two reasons. One person likes to work the conventional way. Okay, I'm finished my homework. I'm going to put you in the answers. Okay? The second person likes to highlight the problems that I go over in class because that might be the problems that I put on the test. Okay? And that some people like to have everything in their notebook. The book and their homework. They like to have everything in one notebook. So that's why you would want to use the print homework assignment. Yes, ma'am. And write put the answers in. Yes, you have to do that. That's why I don't play with it too much. Once you print it out, try not to go back in that homework until you're ready to print. Just in case. Now they're fixing it better where it used to be awful. Students used to print out the homework and then they go in and play with the problems, and it just clustered, just make a cluster, and it just do a mess. So don't do that. Just to be safe. Okay? Any other questions about printing out? Now we come to the most important button that's on here. Ask my instructor. Now the reason this one's important for those that are listening. Is everybody listening? Okay. The reason this one's important is because. If you get to a problem that you absolutely cannot figure out, you send it to me and say, if you I wouldn't I can have to send this to you. Oh, the heck with it. You suck. Okay? And you send it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is not to be funny. The, the reason I'm doing this is to show you this real time. Like, you could be doing this at 1130 at night, and you send it to me. I go over to my home. My stupid thing is going to log me out. The reason it logs people out so quick is no, there's no teachers that use their email in class. So I guarantee you if there was 10 or 15 teachers that use their email, the logout time would be longer. Anyway, I go to my email, and I'm currently working on my email. The reason I'm working on it is I'm trying to figure out a way for it to send those questions that you send into my little folders over here. And I'm making progress. But the reason I'm not making progress is because right now, that email I just sent is in one of these. It should be in the 120. Let's see if it did it. I don't think it did. It? There it is. Yeah, right here. See? And there's the message. That's why I typed that message in. Because there it is. You see, I even... Shut up. See how I misspelled wooden? And then I put you suck at the end? Now, the good thing about this is, at the beginning of class, I'll have five or six questions in that folder. And I will not start class. I will not start going over new material until I cover those questions. You see? Now, what does this do as far as the class pace? It can slow it down a little bit for those that need it. Squeaky door gets what? The grease, yes. Grease and OIL. Okay? I don't say OIL because... There's always some smart ass in the, in the uh, 
that says, you're saying it wrong. So I don't say O-I-L. There's two ways to say it, the right way and the funny way. Okay, so I don't say it. I say O-I-L. Y'all think I just do it for classes. I don't say it out in the real world either. I don't say O-I-L in the real world. I don't say F-O-I-L in the real world. I say F-O-I-L. Some of y'all are saying it the right way. Most of y'all are saying it the right way. There'll be one person that says, well, that's not the way he's saying it. He's supposed to say it. Well. <laughs> and people, I just want to take a fat. I'm sorry. Okay. So look what happens. I put these in the form, I put these in my folder, and then at the beginning of the class, y'all still talking about OIL, aren't you? Some of y'all are saying, do I say it that way? Do I say it that way? I love the people that says Fount Ann on the Mount Ann. I am on the Fount Ann with Mount Ann. What the hell is a Mount Ann? I never heard of a Mount Ann. I've heard of a mountain. Have you ever heard somebody say Mount Ann? Well, I've got some weird friends then. Mount Ann with Fount Ann. Sounds like some kind of country song. One of these new country emo songs. Fount Ann on Mount Ann. Anyway, I have all these in my folder at the beginning of class, and I'll click on to this right here, and it'll take me right to that problem that you sent me from not before. I saw that. So there is no way. So in this, in this, it used to be for people that didn't like to raise their hands, but now everybody uses it. Okay? Squeaky door gets the grease. If I come in here Thursday, because I'll be covering math Tuesday. If I come in here Thursday and there's no questions in my Math 120 folder, what am I going to do? I'm going to keep on going. So that's the breaks of the class. Does that make sense? If you if we're going too fast now, I know there's some of y'all out there that's gonna send me every other problem. Try to slow the class down. I know when you're doing that, people. I can see the name and I can see the pattern. Okay? If I can I can see to see the pattern if you're not trying to do the pattern. So don't try that, okay? Be be use it honestly and I promise you you won't have to do what some of y'all are thinking about doing. All right? Because most people are scared to ask questions because of the conditioning of terrible teachers in the past. They're scared. You ever had a teacher that kind of treated you bad because you asked a class, you asked a question in class? There are teachers at this college that will not answer your questions. You have to ask that during office hours. If you want to know the truth about it, they probably don't know how to answer the question. That's why they have to have office hours most of the time. They don't want to. Some teachers do not want the uncertainty of a question that they don't know about. Does that make sense? In other words, you ask 2x plus 4 is equal to 6. Well, I'm not teaching multi-step problems right now. I'm teaching single-step problems. They don't like that change or they don't like that getting the cart before the horse. I'm teaching one step right now. Don't ask that right now. Okay, so depends on the teacher. I don't care, okay, but I like this format because it helps the shy students that don't like to ask questions. It kind of slows down the class and it needs to be slowed down because guess what? If one person has this question out of 30 students, probably four other ones have it because it's usually about one, two, three percent that follow the same question lines. So don't feel like you're asking a stupid question because once you see me pull this folder up, you're going to see that a lot of people are asking the same questions. Okay? All right. Who's got questions? Now let's look at a test. I'm sorry, what? It does. It gives you three or four. I think it gives you unlimited. Some of these teachers knock it off at three and then it counts against you. To me, that's... That's stupid. But anyway, I, I leave it open because I don't know how this one said. I have to look at it. Let me know if it doesn't let you do it over and over and over. But to me, the repetition to figure out how to do a problem is important. So what this program does, what it should do, 
is if you miss a problem, it'll ask you to do a similar problem. Hit similar problem, do it until you get it correct, and then it'll make it a check mark instead of an X. So everybody should turn in a what? Do they? No. 52s, 26s, 5s. Because it's work. See, the way I've got this set up, my whole class, all my classes, whether it's calculus, whether it's differential equations, or whether it's basic math, I have all my classes set up to where I cover all the bases and you have no what? No excuses. None. You have no excuses. Just like, come by and see me during office hours. What's your answer? Okay. Why? Because I've covered all of your excuses. Same thing with the man. The only people, there's two types of people that fail my class. Can you guess who they are? Lazy, that's one, and challenged. Challenged meaning non sentient, non cognitive. Most of them are lazy. Most of them. Okay? Because I'm fixing to show you why. Let's go to the test. And I'll load one of my tests up. No, I'm just going to go to my 103. I think it's the 109. Let me go back out of this. Here. Get out of this. Leave my courses. 109, I think. Yeah. I think it's this one. No, no, let me check this. Just give me a second. Nope, not that one. Okay, the heck with it. Pull it in. I know I did it for one of nine. Okay, I'll just take a chill pill for a minute. Let me find my daggum test that I loaded yesterday. That means y'all can check your phones. That means you can talk. That means you can talk quietly. There it is. Okay. All right, here's a test. And let me go ahead and extend it. Settings for class, and what's today? 24th, and what time is it? It's 9.14, so we'll leave it for 10 o'clock. Okay, go to your test. Assignments, this one's set up different. From yours. Hit test. Now, when you hit a test, okay, is everybody listening? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to answer any, I don't want to ignore your questions when you ask them. It's going to ask you, do you want to start the test? Why does it ask you, do you want to start the test? Well, it, they want you to read a little bit, okay? They want you to make sure. But this right here, there are some students that will sit down with their laptop at their home. And there's a lightning storm outside, a hurricane, a tornado, a snowstorm, an ice storm, dogs running around in the house, kids running around in the house, and then they get mad at me when something messes up on the test. Do not 
take a test at home with all of that going on or some of that going on, especially the lightning, you know, the blue streaks that come down from the sky, okay? If you've got some of those coming down near your house, just wait and take the test tomorrow. Well, Hubert, I only got till midnight. Well, then whose fault is that? That's yours because you waited till the last one. You waited till the last minute. Okay, start test. Okay, this is, don't don't look at this. This is just problems. It's just algebra. It's no big, no big deal. But this is what it looks like. Your test will be more definitions and more basic math because it's probability. It's not, I mean, statistics. It's not the main meaning mode. So don't worry about that. But this is what the questions look like. I want to show you what the bonus questions look like. Okay, now I am, I thought I, I, I'm, you know, we're going to have a problem in here. Y'all know exactly who I'm talking to. Okay? You come up here and ask me a question, and I decide to start talking to this person over here. What is that? Say it. Everybody say it. Then what is it when you're talking to your neighbor, not once, not twice, but about six times in the last 30 minutes? What is that? All right. I just shot, a, I just shot, a, shot one across the bow. The next time, I'm going to embarrass you. The third time, I'm just going to call security. Everybody got it? Three people, 7,400 students, three people. I'm not going to put up here. Now, I waited. That's about the fifth time I waited. That was five times. So it's easy. Keep your mouth shut while I'm talking. Now, next, next, those, these are all math questions, and you see how it's, most of them, there's some kind of multiple choice, or you type in the answer, or both. The same type. Here, here's a question. Oh, my, that's not a math question. That's a bonus question. Now, this is, the, this is the only question, there's only two questions about me. Okay, the other eight or nine are about your syllabus. Now, let me explain to you why I have these on here. The reason I have these on here for two reasons. One, there was a thing passed down about two years ago from the department heads and the division chairs that we needed, this is part of the holding y'all's hand while y'all go to the bathroom, that we needed to incorporate part of our syllabi and handouts on the tests or quizzes or in the class somehow. So some teachers do it by doing homework questions, some teachers do it by quizzes, and some teachers do it by putting bonus questions on tests. I put bonus questions on tests because I want to see how dumb people are. Because if you give four of the same questions on every test, and you got one person who gets them all wrong, that person is not cognitive. That person, you're not going to help that person anyway. So I do it just to see how many of my students are actually paying attention to what's going on? And I do it because I have to incorporate it in. One thing that they want you to incorporate is how to get in touch with the teacher. Okay, that's one of my questions. The other one is just that, just because that's on my handout, my information handout. Okay? I don't do it because I'm full of myself. Okay? I do it because I was asked to do it. Now, some teachers do it different ways. Some teachers don't do it at all. And then they have to worry about their department head fussing at them. I don't want my department head because that's more work I have to do. I have to go to Pendleton. I have to meet her. And do I don't want to do it. So I just do what I'm told. Some, some, some people do what they're told. Some people don't. People don't do what they're told end up in jail. Okay? All right. So which one is it? Okay. Please don't put D. All right? Put B or C if you don't know. You just do <laughs> That's the Army, that's the Army Marine thing, okay? Next question. That's another math question. Oh my! Most missed question of the bonus questions. The most missed. Why? Don't ask me. There's only one possible answer. Why? Why is that the only possible answer? Well, that's what I said. That, that is what people put. 
They don't equal 100. And these people appropriate. <laughs> if a student does not complete a homework assignment or test, what grade will be recorded for that assignment? <laughs> Another math question. The reason I'm doing this for a point at the end of the test, you'll see what I'm talking about. So these are your math and questions, and here's another one. In your grade book, to find your final grade, it's supposed to be a your, I'll fix it. Find your final grade after you have completed all your assignment, which should you choose? Y'all starting to see a pattern with these answers? That was when I was watching SpongeBob SquarePants with my son. And I was doing this, and he was he, one of those episodes where he had a hand of butter, and he just ate it. So I put the butter in there. We, we record SpongeBob SquarePants, okay? If you have incomplete assignments, and Hubert puts a zero in for the grade, what will that zero do to your grade? That was why I was watching the commercial, the Progressive Insurance commercial. Where she's trying to unlock the door and she goes, tapioca. I was watching that. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm watching Annabelle, there's no telling what I'll put on there. If you take several forms of a test in Hubert's class, how is it counted? Now, I haven't covered this, but there's only one possible answer. Okay. Now, I will take, I will take, uh, yeah, there you go. It used to be a drop clip a long time ago before you'd have to you'd have to fill it out and then bring it to the teacher and they'd sign it and then they'd take you off the roll and then you'd send it to uh, student records and they'd take you off. Now you just do it through the uh, thank you computer. All right, any test that I give you now, as I told you before, I think this is a non this is a non repetitious class. What are your repetitious classes? Algebra, trig, calculus. Those are your repetition classes. If you don't do a problem over and over and over, you're going to suck at it. Okay? In this class, you use more reading comprehension, and you use basic math, and you use critical thinking. So you don't have to use as much repetition as you do in those other classes. So instead of giving you four or five times attempts for the test, I usually give you three in this class. Now, if you take three of the tests and you make a 90 on the third one, then they will, the, the computer, my last plus, will drop the lowest two. Okay? And one of the reasons I'll give you, and this is, and then and the teachers, the teachers that fuss about the way I do things, they say, you're giving them a grade. No, I'm not. Think about it. If I give you 25 questions on a test, and you take that test three or four times, how many problems are you doing? 75 to 100, which is basically another homework assignment. So what I'm getting at? So you're getting better by doing the problems over and over. Some people learn it better. That's the way I used to study for tests. I used to make my up my own tests. And I would just do them over and over and over. That's the way I would study. Okay, so what I do, he averages grades, he takes the highest grades, and drops the lowest. I like C myself. I'll take C. If you put C, I'll take it as an answer. I'm just kidding. B. Another math question could be a, a chapter one or two terminology vocabulary question, or it could be a chapter three. Test question. Another test question. Another test question. If you look at your overall grade, overall grade is in quotation marks. One day, and it has decreased from several days ago, what has happened? Hubert and Russia have conspired against you. A zero must have been placed for one of your grades. Is it time to go? Okay. All right, let me, let me finish this up so y'all can see what my point is. When is the last day of class? December 4th. Oh, my God. 
When is the week of finals? December 4th through the 11th. Okay, to make a long story short, somebody look and submit test. Submit test. What does a non-cognitive, non-sentient person, I mean, anybody that has sentience or cognitive, cog, whatever it's called, they can make a what? A 40 on my test. So if you ever meet somebody that says I made an F in my class, get away from that person. All right, y'all have no. I won't count everybody here today. Y'all get out of here. See y'all. Probably start math Monday, so make sure Tuesday, so make sure you're on my lab plus.